What's one thing that every person in this room is going to become older? And most of us are scared stiff at the prospect. How does that word make you feel? I used to feel the same way. What was I most worried about? Ending up drooling in some grim institutional hallway. And then I learned that only four percent of older Americans are living in nursing homes, and the percentage is dropping. What else was I worried about? Dementia. Turns out that most of us can think just fine to the end. Dementia rates are dropping too. The real epidemic is anxiety over memory loss. <laughs> I also figured that old people were depressed because they were old, and they were going to die soon. <laughs> It turns out that the longer people live, the less they fear dying, and that people are happiest at the beginnings and the ends of their lives. It's called the U curve of happiness. And it's been borne out by dozens of studies around the world. You don't have to be a Buddhist or a billionaire. The curve is a function of the way aging itself affects the brain. So I started feeling a lot better about getting older, and I started obsessing about why so few people know these things. The reason is ageism, discrimination, and stereotyping on the basis of age. We experience it any time someone assumes we're too old for something. Instead of、uh, finding out who we are and what we're capable of, or too young, ageism cuts both ways. All isms are socially constructed ideas: racism, sexism, homophobia, and that means we make them up, and they can change over time. All these prejudices pit us against each other to maintain the status quo, like auto workers in the U.S. competing against auto workers in Mexico instead of organizing for better wages. We we know it's not okay to allocate resources by race or by sex. Why should it be okay to weigh the needs of the young against the old? All prejudice relies on othering, seeing a group of people as other than ourselves, other race, other religion, other nationality. The strange thing about ageism, that other is us. Ageism feeds on denial, our reluctance to acknowledge that we are going to become that older person. It's denial when we try to pass for younger, or when we believe in anti-aging products, or when we feel like our bodies are betraying us simply because they are changing. Why on earth do we stop celebrating the ability to adapt and grow as we move through life? Why should aging well mean struggling to look and move like younger versions of ourselves? It's embarrassing to be called out as older until we quit being embarrassed about it. And it's not healthy to go through life dreading our futures. The sooner we get off this hamster wheel of age denial, the better off we are. Ageism is a form of systematic stereotyping and discrimination against people simply because they are old. An ageist, younger generation sees older people as different from itself. It subtly ceases to identify with its elders as human beings. Ageism can take shapes in stereotypes and myths. Outright disdain and dislike, sarcasm and scorn, subtle avoidance and discriminatory practices in housing, employment, pension arrangements, healthcare, and other services. Older persons are subject to certain types of abuse that include physical abuse, emotional abuse, social abuse, sexual abuse, and financial abuse. The underlying basis of ageism is the dread and fear of becoming older, becoming ill and dependent. And approaching death, the young dread aging and the old envy youth. There have been many studies that have shown the effects of ageism that are going on in our world today. A study conducted by the American Academy of Facial, Plastic, and Reconstructive Surgery revealed that baby boomers have received nearly a quarter of a million facelifts and other cosmetic surgeries. Most of these patients were over 50. Karen Sicom, a University of Florida sociologist, Was quoted saying, "The thought of saggy breasts, hair loss, or wrinkles doesn't sit well with people who have grown up emphasizing fitness and youth." The media also plays a large influence on ageism. A study showed that about 70% older men and 80% of older women seen on TV are portrayed disrespectfully, treated with little courtesy, and often looked at as bad. This is very important because of the. Amount of technology that is used in our day to day. Another study showed that less than two percent of primetime television characters are sixty-five or older. 
Although this group is 12.7% of the population, middle-aged and older white males have joined women and minorities on the sidelines, as white men under 40 get most of the jobs writing for television and film. Employment and earning prospects for older writers have declined relative to those for younger writers. Now I'm going to talk about some problems that go along with ageism. One problem is elder abuse. Elder abuse is a widespread phenomenon that affects older adults who live in rich and poor nations. Elder abuse can involve neglect, such as failure to provide food, shelter, clothing, medical care, and personal hygiene, as well as over-medication. It is believed that in the U.S., there are as many as 1.2 million older adults who are physically abused or neglected each year. 1 million to 3 million Americans, 65 and older, have been injured, exploited, or otherwise mistreated by someone on whom they depend on for care or protection. It is estimated that each year, 5 million older Americans are victims of financial exploitation, but only 4% of these cases are reported. A second problem is age-based health care rationing. A study found that only 10% of people 65 and over receive appropriate screening tests for bone density, colorectal and prostate cancer, and glycoma. This despite the fact that the average age of colorectal cancer patients is 70. More than 70% of prostate cancer is diagnosed in men over 65 and that people over, over 60 are six times more likely to suffer from glycoma. The next problem is retirement. The promotion of retirement goes along with the emphasis on young people. Industries are getting rid of and not hiring older people because of the lack of respect they have for them. Companies are ridding themselves of older workers to make room for the younger generation because they think they will be better in the workplace. Next is living situations. Urbanization and increased geographic mobility have been factors in the breakdown of the extended family unit. As a result, elders in alternative living situations experience increased invisibility and isolation. Another important question when it comes to ageism is how it links to future careers. Knowing about ageism is very important for every career. It is important because it is something that every person of a certain age experiences. Being aware about it today can allow us to raise awareness and stop this, from, stop this form of oppression for when we grow to that age. Elders need to be respected, especially in the workplace, because chances are everyone our age will have a boss who is older than we are and we need to respect them or else you, you, you will lose your job. Having this awareness about ageism can help our nation grow past this form of oppression. I do not know. I thought the word ageism meant getting older. Ageism is the discrimination of the elderly and discrimination of you with your age. Discrimination against anyone based on age. Yes, because it, nobody really wants to get old and there's just the idea of getting old isn't desirable. I do think ageism is a problem in our country. People don't have patience for the elderly. Um, they discriminate against them. They're left out of things. Um, the healthcare system is not as good for our elderly. Um, overall, I think just a lot of people, it's more the patients for the elderly that I feel that they are. I don't know that ageism is a problem in our country because I, I'm not that age, I'm not that demographic, and my eyes aren't haven't been awakened to the potential that there is a problem. When I'm out and about, I see, on a general basis, I see the elderly being treated with kindness, and uh, uh, because it isn't something that's uh, that has impacted me, I've not seen it directed toward my in-laws or my parents, I'm unaware of it being a real problem, or problem at all. I think ageism is a problem in our country in the sense that no one really wants to get older because the older you get, the closer you are to death. Yes, I was raised to respect the elderly. Um, I was always to be polite. I, in my generation, everybody was Mr. and Mrs., no matter what. Um, I also 
you gave up your chairs for the elderly. You always deferred to them. You listened to them. You were polite. Um, absolutely raised to respect the elderly. Yes, I was raised to respect the elderly by being told to always shake their hand, call them Mr. and Mrs., and have formal, polite language. In my family, I was definitely raised to respect the elderly. Uh, with my parents, who are both still alive and in their 80s. My husband and I are very respectful towards them, and so are my children. Oh, absolutely. I was told uh, that with age comes wisdom, and that the older the person, the more you were to respect them. In some ways, yes, I'm looking forward to having kids and having a family, but there's some scary things about getting old. And so. In some ways, I'm looking forward to getting older because you know more and you can sit back and watch things and um, just enjoy life in a different way. But then in many ways, I'm not looking forward to getting older after seeing my own parents age and be sick. And that scares me to be in that situation myself where my kids have to help me. But, um, so yes and no in being scared about getting No, I am not. I am very happy with today. I know the future is inevitable. Whether my future ends in one minute or in 50 years is, is unknown to me. I'll get there when I get there. I'm not looking forward to getting older in the sense that the older I get, the closer I am to death. So no, I'm not looking to aging any more than I am right now. They, oh, lots of people think that older people can't use technology, that they don't know like how to really act in a social environment that has been created in the last decade. You know, because in my own mind at least, I'm not yet elderly, I don't know. I think in, unless something's terribly obvious, most of us don't have uh, the ability to know what pains another group unless we've walked a mile in their footsteps. So two things that come to mind immediately to answer this question would be, I believe the elderly are frequently discriminated against in terms of job opportunities and in terms of uh, obtaining appropriate health care. Aside from that, I'm, I'm unaware of discrimination that is intentionally directed toward the elderly. To me, the most obvious way that the elderly are discriminated against would be in the workplace. Um, I think that it's hard for a 60-year-old, even a 50-year-old maybe, to maintain their level of seniority when you have a younger person come in who may be more knowledgeable in technology or may be more knowledgeable in the more current ways. So I think the workplace is a big discrimination. I think it's very important for the elderly to stay current with technology and understand how all of that works so that they can be a viable part of the workplace. Oh, yeah. um, in many ways, the elderly are still discri are, all, are discriminated against um, in employment. Many times there's someone that is more qualified than a younger person to take the job, but they don't get the job because of their age. Their health care prices would go up and they'd be too expensive for the company, even though they're the most qualified. Um, they're discriminated against in neglect, in um, being teased, and people not having the patience to wait for them. Um, people who work with them sometimes will, as I said, neglect them or leave them alone and not treat them with the respect they deserve. Um, our healthcare system, there's discrimination, especially if you have a pre-existing condition. Um, but overall, there's just lots of people that will tease the elderly and not take the time to get to know them for who they really are. An advantage, advantages of getting older are that you're wiser and you're more aware of the world and um, maybe you don't take things as seriously and you just look at things differently and enjoy a little bit more. Um, you hopefully will have the time to travel more, to do all those things that you might not have had time to do when you were younger. Enjoy your grandchildren, etc. cetera. Um, disadvantages are just not being able to get around as fast and your body not being, you know, not being able to do all the things that you're used to doing at some point.
um, also disadvantages in your health as it slows down and possibly you know opportunities are available to you as well I think uh, the advantages are hopefully you have the ability to retire and therefore are able to reap the benefits of your work and maybe travel and spend time doing things, hobbies that you enjoy doing outside of work. The disadvantages are your health. Unfortunately, as you get older, your health is not as good. You may have some physical disabilities, mental disabilities, mental decline, um, and you're not as mobile as you used to be. You're old and you know you're running out of time. You're more apt on an average basis to make the most of each day. What are the disadvantages? Well, the disadvantages are you're running out of time. Uh, your body can't do the things it did before. Uh, you're not as limber. Your bones hurt, your joints hurt, your memory's not so sharp, and, uh, and you know that uh, the end is near. The advantages are that people will respect you and listen to you, and that you can kind of have a bigger say in what goes on in our world that we live in, like you can vote. And the disadvantages are that as you get old, you could be discriminated against as an older being, that you can't do certain things and that you should be pitied, but you can do stuff. I don't know what we can do as a nation to stop ageism. I think most everything uh, that's a big problem starts by being solved through a bunch of little steps. So. The best way for me to answer this is I can stop ageism, I can do my part to stop it by just being nice to older people. It starts with me being nice to my parents and being nice to people I work with and live near who happen to be older than I am. Um, how others do that, how others make this world a better place by stomping out ageism is, is bound to start by tiny little steps as well. So I think uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you and do your best to walk in the footsteps of another and appreciate what they're enduring. Uh, Initially, within our nation, we can stop ageism right in our own families, in our own homes, with how we model to our kids, how we respect our elders, how we treat them, not just our relatives, but just people that you see in day-to-day -day life. Um, it all begins at home, and if we model that and show that, the next generation will hopefully do that as well. I also think our country and our churches and our community groups and everywhere can um, just really show that these are leaders in our society that we should appreciate having still in our society. Um, employers can employ the elderly if they're qualified and not worry so much about the insurance of those elderly people. Well, we can spread more awareness and kind of get to people by saying that pe older people are just like us. They were us once in their lifetime and that everyone will get to that point at some point. Upon listening to the results of the interview, as a group we have come up with three solutions to help better inform the public about ageism. Solution one, inclusion of ageism in diversity programs at middle schools, high schools, and colleges. Teach children about ageism and show them real examples of when and how it might occur. Having schools create a required class or course for students to take. This would create a better understanding of ageism to people at young age to inform them about it and how to prevent ageism. Some possible drawbacks from this is, as education might be a good place to start when informing the public about ageism, schools tend to be a very political place with many biases, along with different views based on where these schools are. This could cause conflict in the school place. Solution two, more positive image of older persons in the media. Cast older people in main roles, allow more senior citizens to appear on the television more often, stop showing news of older people making dumb blunders. This would spread the word to a large population that elderly people can perform middle-aged tasks, for example, acting and or whatever that actor is acting as and or be anchors or hosts to a show. Similar, 
similarly to education, media tends to be a very political place. Promoting an awareness about ageism could cause ageists to stop watching those media sources, which could cause worse ratings for certain networks, which could end up in conflict. Lastly, solution three, people recognizing the ageist stereotypes they hold. Create a club, give examples of how ageism might occur or what ageism sounds like or looks like, and ask them to reflect personally. This would build a community with a conscious mind about ageism, not to jump, up, not to, jump to conclusions about ageist stereotypes, and this would create an environment where members can come together and share beliefs, thoughts, to discuss and debate. Some drawbacks could be that not all members consistently go to the group meetings, which could cause the group to eventually fail, causing the community to not work out.